Hey, what's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Beauty for Build. Today we're kicking off Kyle's Apocalypse Car Build. So you know we're all doing Apocalypse Cars. Kyle, in a very roundabout way, picked out this car for his Apocalypse Project. I believe that this car is the most horsepower per buck that you can even buy these days. And it's, a, it's actually a really, really nice car. We got a great deal at auction on this thing. And we can't wait to show it to you guys and tell you about the game plan for it. And we're actually gonna start working on it today as well. So stay tuned. Before we get down to work, I want to take a second out to thank our sponsor. Today's episode is sponsored by Honey. Shopping online is supposed to be easy and Honey finally makes it easy. Honey's a browser extension that automatically finds the best promo codes for you and applies them to your cart when you're shopping online. So imagine this, you're online, you say you're shopping for uh, you're a tire rack and you're shopping for new tires for your car. When you go to checkout, this little box is gonna drop down from the corner and all you gotta do is click apply coupon codes and then you just watch the prices drop. It's so awesome, it's such an easy way to save money. I most recently was buying a bunch of car parts for Oscar's build on eBay and I saved a bunch of money. I think I saved 30 bucks. Just one click and took 30 bucks off of what I was buying. It's pretty great. Those of us from the BS for Build crew that have used my link in the description below have collectively saved over $600,000 and I'm so proud to say that number just keeps going up and up and up. It's such a cool thing. And Honey is, supports over 30,000 different online sites. So you're gonna, you're gonna find savings pretty much wherever you're shopping online. So if you're on your computer and you're watching this right now, do yourself a solid, do your wallet a solid, and go download Honey right now. It's joinhoney.com slash build. If you're on your phone right now, just make a note. Say, hey Siri, remind me to download Honey when I get home. That's how I get all my reminders done. It's free to use, it is super easy to install, it's just two clicks. Again, you go to joinhoney.com slash build, click once, and you click twice, and you are ready to start saving. This is a product and a company that I'm 100% behind. They have supported us for years, and it's just such a good thing, and it's so easy to save. I just love it. So again, joinhoney.com slash build, go get it. Thanks to Honey for sponsoring this episode. Let's get down to work. So we're starting with the uh, the bad side of the car. We bought this car at auction, sight unseen. It was out of California, and it was in a bit of a wreck, a, a bit. I mean, it destroyed the side, which isn't the worst thing in the world for an apocalypse car, but it did catch this rear wheel and just do a bunch of damage to the suspension down here. We could tell when we were getting it off of the shipper. Now this car, we one of the reasons we bought it, uh, well, I'll show you the auction pictures here, is the interior just looks super, super clean. And I figure any car that was like upkept this well probably had good maintenance on it and it had some nice like choice upgrades like the wheels as well and uh, I figured you know what it'd probably be a really good option and we just decided to go ahead and, and bid on it for the project that we wanted to do and we got this car for $2,300. As you guys might have seen in the last episode so around the apocalypse builds we were trying we're trying to build all of these cars utilizing scraps or, or leftover things or things that we didn't use on other builds and stuff like that so like years ago when Kyle first started working with me we actually went to the customs department of, of uh, Oregon or something like that. We had air freighted in a body kit uh, and we never did anything with it. We, ne we showed us unloading it on an episode like a vlog and then it has it's taken up a lot of room. It's like a 15 piece body kit, taking a lot of room in my basement. Um, that was a body kit for, for this model of car. So you had a couple options. You, this car comes in a few different engine options, a four cylinder turbo, I believe. Mm -hmm six inline six and then an inline six cylinder turbo which is what this one is which is what makes it such an insane deal for twenty three hundred dollars so as far as damage on this car uh we've been looking around the just well the side that we parked in the bushes solid looks pretty good overall uh, like i mentioned before suspension component parts seem to all just be toasted that wheel is broken this wheel is okay it's got a bunch of scratch marks it's got a huge chunk taken out of the tire so we're gonna have to get some new tires obviously his fender's toast but that comes with the body kit the door is also toast but luckily the hinges seem to be in relatively good shape relatively. so yeah so we picked up another door for him it was like 200 bucks to find a door on ebay so that was really good um the hood looks fine the bumper's got some stuff taken out of it but the bumper gets replaced with the body kit and then the engine looks have we popped the hood on this ever? Yeah. Yeah, we looked at it. Yeah, we did. Engine looks good. We'll show you guys. I know the hood looks really great. It's just a really nice, clean example of this N54 platform. N54, N55. I'm not really sure which. <laughs> Kyle, do you know which? N54. N54 yeah. comes out this uh, this one. Because it's our earlier one. That makes sense, mm -hmm. yeah. These engines, aside from the BMW-ness of them and the Vanos and all that weird crap, 
are known for being like really bulletproof and you can push a lot of lot of power through these engines with minimal minimal mods we have a goal to get this car to 500 horsepower which would just be insane so with these apocalypse cars it's up to each of us to design them any way that we want i did want to point out the body kit that i bought for this car uh we'll show it to you guys in like hopefully the next episode or whatever when we go get it from my house cost 3200 dollars. so it costs way more than this car even costs which is crazy um this one's gonna be a hard one to design. It's hard to make such a modern car with rounded edges and not a lot of extreme features look really extreme. So it's gonna be up to Kyle to kind of come up with some very unique ways of doing this, but I know it can be done. Oh, it can be done. Yeah. We've seen some artists online that have done some really cool renderings and some cool stuff with BMWs and, and different things, but I think, I think, uh, like Kyle was telling me earlier, getting the body kit here first, trying to get it kind of test fit on the car, seeing how that looks and seeing how it fits up to see if you're gonna have to just get mental with even just getting the body kit on the car is gonna be a really important starting piece. So this is a really cool moment for me because after Kyle's worked here for, I don't know, a year, two years, however long. Year oh, and a half. Year and a half. He's finally got his own project car. Um, but we're going to make a lot of great content. I'm going to try and kind of narrate a little bit of the stuff just because I have so much experience talking behind and in front of the camera as well. But, you know, we're going to try and jump into more conversations and record a lot more of the, like the stuff that we might sometimes leave behind the scenes or whatever, talking through issues, talking through problems and stuff like that. So hopefully it'll be a lot less of me and a lot more of Kyle and that would be great so getting started we need to get this thing off the trailer because we have to use the trailer <laughs> yeah so Kyle's gonna go ahead and jump into the uh, suspension and uh, we've already uh, it was really cheap to order replacement parts we found it I found a kit no Kyle found a kit yeah, I found that yeah Kyle found a kit online on, on eBay 70 bucks for every single control arm replacement um, so we've got all the new control arms I don't know what more we could need good luck Kyle Alright, it's been a couple of hours and Kyle's made a lot of progress on the control arms. How's it going? Uh, it's, it's been tough. It's very tight in there, but we're making progress. Got all the broken ones out. Now we're just looking at that. Yeah, the broken ones are all right here. Some of these definitely took a beating. Some of these bolts are actually like bent sideways. It's pretty crazy. Um, and now we're looking at this shock right here. The shock you can see got hit by the tires, just totally crinkled in. Um, we got into the trunk. Kyle's jumping into the trunk. Gonna replace the shock. And then we should be pretty close to being done. The boys got the shock out. How hard was it? Easy. Oscar? It took about a five. Pulled out the dad strength there yeah. to pull that down. So there's a fitting on the back, obviously, in the trunk. A couple lower down. Threads on the back of that. Is that all of it? That's it. Yep. Easy DIY at home, boys. Let's get the new one back in there. All right, you guys can tell that it was getting dark out, so it took a little bit of time to get all the control arms tightened up. Everything, you know, the tolerances in here are, are pretty tight. Uh, and I was hanging out watching Kyle and Oscar joined in. But it is all in there. Kyle, anything surprise you on this one? Uh, just the condition of some of the bolts that were in there before, like they were ripped off. Uh, but once we kind of got it figured out, everything fit up pretty nicely. There's one little part that was tricky, but just took a little bit of work to get it in. It's nice and snug now. Yeah, there's a little like kind of torquing down over here to press the control arm that way, but uh, it looks great. It's straight. Um, yeah, Kyle did his first, what is it? One, two, three, four control arm and shock replacement. And uh, tomorrow morning we will get a wheel on this car and we'll be able to back it off of the trailer. Now that all the control arms are replaced, Kyle's got his busted wheel on here. Koenig, shout out to Koenig. They already sent us a replacement wheel for this side, which is awesome. So we're gonna go ahead now and unstrap it from the trailer for the first time since we've taken delivery of it. Push her on out, and then we can start uh, working on pushing it into the garage where he's gonna be working on it. Dude, isn't it clean? This so is clean. nice. I know. 
That's the whole reason we decided to bid on this car is just like the condition of the interior was spotless. Whoever had this car really took care of it. Yeah, they really cared about it. And if you're watching this episode um, in this build series, I apologize now because my shoes aren't that clean. No, it's only going to get worse <laughs> for this car going forward. Yeah. Well, we got the car off the trailer uh, and it was really hard to push with the flat tire. So we decided, hey, let's just try and start it, see what we can do. And uh, cranks does not start. I don't know how an accident starting over here and going to back here makes this car not start anymore, but that sucks. Uh, for now, Kyle wants to keep uh, working, try and you know, maybe not have this, this void in here going on. Uh, so we did order a door knowing that this one needed a new door. We got a door for very, very cheap. Normally we'd be working with only scraps, but considering if we go on any long-term trips or anything like that, that needs to be replaced. So uh, <laughs> we got a door for Kyle for like $200. It was really cheap. So he's gonna go ahead and uh, try and install that now. It's gonna be interesting to see how bad these things got tweaked before this door completely ripped itself off the hinges. And we don't even know if we have all the parts, but that's for Kyle to figure out. Not bad. Considering the amount of damage that was done to this area to throw a door on there and have it like, it fits up. There's some denting down there, but it closes like perfectly. Yeah, it fits real nice. Nice. <laughs> you got the interior paneling all swapped out. That's great. I like it. So the body kit that we'll probably have in the next episode has new fenders, has a new hood. Has a new front bumper. Doesn't have a new quarter panel, so that will... We'll have some fun with that. Yeah, it should. I feel like it should play into the apocalypse yeah. theme a little bit, but that's totally up to you. Nice, good job, man. One of the real reasons we wanted to get a door, too, is so Kyle would have a window, his car wouldn't get leaked on. So does the glass work? It's got these crazy seat belt things that try and come up for you. But yeah, it looks like the glass... Look at that. Wow. That's a cheap fix. $2,500 BMW right here. All right, so we towed slash pushed Kyle's car into the uh, his, his new kind of working space. This is where he's gonna be working on this build. And uh, it's time to start diagnosing why the car won't start. It cranks, but it won't fire. So it's a pretty simple methodology that we go through, air, fuel, spark. You wanna verify that you have all those things. If you have all those things, the car really should fire up. And when I buy a car that's wrecked like this, I'm obviously gonna be kind of looking towards things that could be caused by the wreck. Now in the back here, our battery box, uh, the wheel flew up into the battery box, crunched the battery box, so the battery was gone. Um, and then we put a replacement battery in and we think we wired it up, right? But if we did anything wrong, the car may not send the spark to the spark plugs. And I would say that that's the most likely thing that's happening th with this. So we're gonna start diagnosing the spark. And now the way to do that is not really that hard. We're gonna go ahead and get under the hood, get access to one of the ignition coils that go onto your spark plugs you're gonna pop that baby off and then you're gonna like look to bridge that towards the block and see if it's shooting a spark to our block so we're gonna go ahead and try that right now So Kyle got the cover off, which gave us access to the coil packs. I'm pretty sure that's what these are called. And then we just put a little socket extension in here because the part that shoots the spark to the spark plug, so you can see our spark plugs are right down there, um, is kind of deep down in here. And we bridged it to the body right here and we can see sparks shooting uh, when we try to crank the engine. So we definitely have spark. Now that's all that's left is air and fuel. I think air would definitely throw a code uh, if we had like a math sensor that was so dead that it wouldn't read air at all or a map sensor that was completely off. I don't really know, but uh, that would normally throw a code. So I think we should be focusing on fuel next. <laughs> all right, on the fuel side of things, we noticed something when I jump in here. Oh, if I can actually get the key in the car and I turn it on. We are not hearing the fuel pump. We're hearing this weird seatbelt thing. 
but there is no sign of a fuel pump doing anything back here. So we're gonna go ahead and take the seat out of here, open this thing up and see if we can find anything going on back here out of the ordinary. This car has two different fuel pumps. This is a low pressure fuel pump that would prime up. That might be the reason why we're not hearing much um, or something could be going on, maybe bad wiring, who knows. Well, we found the problem. Now be very careful if you're playing around with batteries next to fuel pumps, make sure you get all the fuel out of them. So we drained this uh, basket out of fuel, pulled it out of the car. We weren't hearing any noises inside the car. And then we um, bench tested it by, by taking you know, positive and a negative and running it to the pumps, positive and negative, and it's doing nothing, like nothing at all. This pump is dead in the water. So we gotta try and get another fuel pump for Kyle's car. That's definitely the reason why we weren't able to start. Hi guys, it's the next day. We got really lucky. I hit up our guys over at ECS Tuning and they were actually able to overnight us a replacement fuel pump, which is so cool. So we didn't really lose much time on this build. I wanna give them a huge shout out, ECS Tuning guys. There's gonna be a link in the description. If you got a European car, you need parts or stuff to do a service on your car, anything like that, they have such a great selection and they've been such a huge help with us on everything that we do European. It's been really, really phenomenal. So thanks to them for the support. Links in the description, guys, go check it out. So this is the new fuel pump let's go ahead and get it out and we'll look at it side by side new fuel pump looks pretty much identical to the other one well actually it looks exactly identical so as chris fix would say like uh, out with the old and with the new let's go ahead and get this new fuel pump installed in the car and hopefully it'll fire up for us Kyle has got the, uh, back there, he's got the fuel pump all put back in there and everything's all buttoned back up. So now when you hit the start button, we should hear it do something, hopefully. Oh, well, <laughs> that's one way of testing it out. Huh, let's just try and hit pop. I'm not hearing anything. Pull the key out and put it back on because it should go like ding. Okay, now throw the key in and then hit start. Okay, now I heard a sound that time, but I'm not really sure what that was. I'm just gonna walk over to the action section and let's just let's just crank her up and see what happens. All right, fire in the hole. Kyle, you want to give us some RPMs? What? You want to rev it a little bit? in the future, for sure. That's interesting, it's flashing a fuel thing. I guess we could be, oh, it says we're like out of gas. Are we out of gas? Looks like we're a little low on gas. Let's see. <laughs> Sounds way better from in here. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, I think we're running out of gas. Now you got it to blow off the sound. I got it too? Yeah. Yeah, Kyle was just babying it. After the exhaust gas cleared out a little bit, I was telling Kyle that we should take a look at the fuel system. We just installed the fuel pump because there is the fuel level sending unit that's in there. It's just two little wires. He double checked and the plug was just a little bit loose. Once he plugged that back in, we have no more fuel warning on the dash, which is great, so. Awesome, got another working car. 
So now we fully introduced you guys to all three of our Apocalypse cars. Kyle, I believe, is going to end up with the most horsepower out of all of us because it's very, very cheap to get this car to yeah. a high level of horsepower, which I'm really, really excited about. Um, and the, the body kit that costs more money than this car is uh, sitting in my basement. So in the next episode, Kyle's going to get like a 15 piece body kit that includes pretty much like everything, like new hood, new trunk, side skirts, all sorts of fenders, all sorts of cool stuff. And you guys will see what it looks like on this build. If you got any comments or ideas of themes or anything you'd like to see Kyle pull off on this thing. I know it's not totally a blank slate. Definitely got some stuff in mind, yeah. but but uh, you know, we might be open some for, stuff in mind. It might be open for some ideas. In the next episode that you're going to see on the channel though, um, we're going to be working on my car because it's the least like a car out of everybody's and uh, I'll get that thing to be a roller and you guys will see what that thing's going to look like and the seating position all that good stuff in the next episode. So, I'll see you guys then. Thanks for watching. See you soon. Peace. Come on.